Hi guys, this is Dr. Pratesh Singh, your surgery faculty. And today we are going to discuss the quality of our new rapid revision notes. See, the content is given beautifully in the form of Q&E format. And I'm going to tell you that NEET PG 2025 and questions of FMG 2025, approximately 80 to 85% questions were directly from our rapid revision notes. So here you can see the quality is amazing. The kind of images are amazing and it is beautifully given in Q and E format, right? To show that quality, I'm going to discuss some questions of NEED PG 2025. So first see this question, a 43 years old female presents to OPD due to changes in the breast. So there are changes in the breast and you can see lump in the breast as given below. Biopsy was done which confirms the breast cancer. So here there is breast cancer. Identify the stage of breast cancer. So can you notice the changes in the breast skin? You can see there is redness in the breast skin. Clear? And it is involving more than one third of the breast skin. So what's the diagnosis? This is inflammatory breast cancer. And guys, you know, inflammatory breast cancer, what is the stage? The stage is T4D. So inflammatory breast cancer and the stage is T4D. So here, what's the correct answer? Correct answer is option number D. Now see our rapid revision notes. So here you can see in this image, you can notice that patient is having PUD orange. So question is, describe the clinical signs of PUD orange and its cause. Clinical signs of PUD orange and its cause. So what happens? There is depression and cutaneous edema. And this patient is having orange peel appearance. So what kind of appearance you can see? It is orange peel appearance. That's why the name is PUD orange. What is the problem in PUD orange here? You know, is the most conspicuous that is also known as obvious sign of breast cancer. And it is because of lymphatic permeation by tumor cells. So you can see here, it is because of lymphatic permeation by tumor cells. So here what happens? Yes, the tumor cells are going to enter the lymphatics. It is going to cause the lymphatic obstruction. And because of that, there is cutaneous edema. So first thing, you got to know that this is PUD orange. Second thing, what is the stage? So see the staging. Here you can see the stage. So describe the stages, tumor size extension according to 8th AJCC TNM classification. So T1, when the size is up to 2 cm. T2 when the size is more than 2 to 5, T3 when it's more than 5 cm and you know that T4A whenever there is extension to chest wall and you know that chest wall is formed by ribs, intercostal muscles and serratus anterior. You know that pectoralis major and minor is not the part of chest wall and involvement of pectoralis major as well as minor is not going to affect the stage. Clear? In T4B what happens? There are skin changes and in the skin changes we are going to include what? We are going to include what? Ulceration edema as well as PUD orange and satellite nodules. What is T4C? Guys, T4C that is T4A plus T4B. And what is T4D? Here, inflammatory breast cancer. So we saw that it was T4D because there were signs of inflammation. Redness involving more than one third of breast skin. Clear? So the stage was T4D. Now you can see the second question. Again, this question is taken from NEED PG 2025. Question is, a malignant neck swelling here. Patient is having malignant neck swelling and it was surgically removed from a patient shown in the image below. What is the symptom likely to be developed within two to three days after the procedure? So first tell me what is the name of this procedure? Obviously, it is thyroidectomy because here you are going to remove the thyroid. So name of surgery, guys, the name of surgery, this is thyroidectomy. What is this? This is thyroidectomy, clear? So the name of surgery, that's thyroidectomy. And you know that on second to fifth day, what happens? Patient is going to have manifestations of parathyroid insufficiency. What is the cause of parathyroid insufficiency? It is because of vascular infarction. And it is going to manifest in the form of manifestations of hypocalcemia like carpopedal spasm. So what is the correct answer here? It is carpopedal spasm. Now see the notes. Here it's written, what are the key complications of thyroidectomy? And you know, there is hemorrhage, there is respiratory distress, nerve injuries, parathyroid insufficiency. Got it? Thyroid insufficiency. So how you're going to manage tension hematoma? Whenever there is tension hematoma, it is because of bleeding from muscular artery or there is slippage of ligature from superior thyroid vessels. For the management, we are going to shift the patient to OT, open the sutures, control the bleeding and after that put the drain and then wound is sutured. Clear? This is how we manage. Here, what was the question? On which day patient will be having manifestations of hypocalcemia? It is because of parathyroid insufficiency. So you can see it is because of parathyroid insufficiency. So see here, when does parathyroid insufficiency manifest and how it is managed? So guys, 
second to fifth day and that was the question on third day patient was having signs of hypocalcemia or carpopedal spasm so how you are going to manage oral calcium supplementation whenever patient is having severe symptom or calcium level is less than eight we are giving iv calcium gluconate clear so this was the second one straight forward from rapid revision notes now see this question a 40 years old female presented with jaundice and pruritus first patient is a female she is having jaundice and pruritus here anti mitochondrial autoantibody was positive anti mitochondrial antibody it is positive ana was negative biopsy shows portal inflammation and ductular proliferation with lymphocytic infiltrate most probable diagnosis first tell me in which case there is anti mitochondrial autoantibodies are there patient is having jaundice pruritus there is fatigue so you know it is more common in females which condition it's primary biliary cirrhosis you know that primary sclerosing cholangitis here it's the etiology is unknown it's not an autoimmune disorder so if you see this primary sclerosing cholangitis this is more common in males etiology is unknown but this one is autoimmune you know this is autoimmune here what is the autoantibody you can see the first clue anti mitochondrial second clue it is more common in females characteristic manifestations are pruritus fatigue and there is jaundice clear in this case if you go for biopsy you are going to find portal inflammation ductal proliferation lymphocytic infiltrate this question is also taken from need pg 2025 and see the notes now see guys here what are the key features of primary biliary cirrhosis first you can see autoimmune disorder second more common in females here which autoantibody anti mitochondrial autoantibody and in this case see the pathology there is progressive destruction of intrahepatic bile ducts only here there is florid duct lesion there is lymphocytic infiltration granulomatous inflammation clear the characteristic features are pruritus fatigue there is jaundice and typically pruritus precedes jaundice and pruritus is most bothersome in evening investigation of choice biopsy you can make the diagnosis by anti mitochondrial autoantibody and since intrahepatic bile ducts are diseased here we are going for liver transplantation clear it is liver transplantation so see how beautifully it has been given and this question was directly taken from the rapid revision notes again this question is taken from need pg 2025 following image depicting the bile duct injury can you see this there is bile duct injury which type of Strasbourg classification can you see the arrow in this arrow you are going to notice that here the leak is from cystic duct stump and here you can see the leak is from subvesical duct of Lushka so whenever there is leak is from subvesical duct of Lushka or cystic duct stump it is type A this is type A so see what is given in our notes you can see this is the Strasbourg classification of laparoscopic bile duct injuries type A that's the most common and in this case what we are going to include cystic duct stump leak or there is leak from subvesical duct of Lushka what is type B whenever there is ligation or occlusion of aberrant right sectoral duct and when there is transaction without occlusion this is type C type D in this case there is injury to lateral wall of common hepatic duct and type E that's E1 to E5 bismuth classification clear so this is Strasbourg classification one of the very very important question and again you can see how beautifully it's given can you tell me it is A B C D E so which one is the most common type obviously the most common type is type A now see this question again it's taken from NEET PG 2025 neonate was brought to the emergency with severe respiratory distress can you see shortly after birth and the patient is admitted to ICU within 24 hours admitted to ICU within 24 hours you can see the chest x-ray chest x-ray is shown below what's the most likely diagnosis guys can you see what's the finding in this chest x-ray you can see multiple bowel loops patient is having respiratory distress a newborn having respiratory distress multiple bowel loops in left hemithorax so this is a classical case of congenital diaphragmatic hernia and you know what's the most common type Bokdalek hernia so the most common type is Bokdalek hernia and here you can see our notes what are the two types of congenital diaphragmatic hernia Bokdalek and Moragagni which one is most common Bokdalek is the most common type of congenital diaphragmatic hernia where is the defect left posterior lateral what is the most common content can you see small intestine it is also known as left sided posterior lateral hernia it is because of failure of fusion of pleuroperitoneal canal most common organ herniated we discussed small intestine 
What will happen whenever there is herniation of these contents? There is collapse of ipsilateral lung, shift of mediastinum to opposite side, there is dextrocardia, and there is a scaphoid abdomen. There is a similar hernia which is less common, morgagni. What kind of defect? In Bokdalek, it is left posterior lateral. In morgagni, it is right anterior medial. It is less common. Here, the most common content is transverse colon. Majority of patients are asymptomatic, diagnosed incidentally on X ray. So, guys, here, congenital diaphragmatic hernia, there is a typical triad. How to remember? RDS. It's RDS, respiratory distress, dextrocardia, scaphoid abdomen. And how we are going to make the diagnosis? Here, you can see. We are going to make the diagnosis on chest x-ray and you can see almost same image, almost same image was there in EPG. Can you see this? Same image. So, here you can see presence of multiple bowel loops in the left hemithorax and when stomach is being herniated, in that case you are going to find gastric bubble and if you are going to insert the Ryles tube, coiling of Ryles tube occurs in the stomach located in thorax. Now, see this famous question. Again, this question has been taken from NEET PG 2025. 32-years-old female presents with difficulty in swallowing. So, there is dysphagia, regurgitation and weight loss. This is the classical triad of achalasia cardia. Dysphagia, regurgitation and weight loss. Barium swallow image is given below. What is the investigation of choice? So, on this barium swallow, in this image, you can see here, this patient is having rat tail appearance. So, classically, it is achalasia cardia. And can you tell me, what is the investigation of choice for diagnosis, guys? For achalasia cardia, you know, for motility disorders of esophagus, investigation of choice is manometry. So, here the correct answer is manometry. So, let's see what is given in our notes. Here you can see, what are the clinical presentations of achalasia cardia? Most common symptom, dysphagia followed by weight loss. And you know, dysphagia is more common to liquids in comparison to solids. There is aspiration. Because of that, there can be pneumonitis. So, most common complication is lung abscess. And there is increased risk of one malignancy. Which one, guys? Tell me, squamous cell carcinoma. We discussed the mnemonic. How to remember? Mnemonic is DRA, dysphagia, regurgitation and weight loss. So, it is DRA. Dysphagia, regurgitation and weight loss. What are the findings on barium swallow? You can see the findings on barium swallow. Can you see here? Rat tail sign, bird beak sign or pencil tip. So, rat tail, bird beak or pencil tip. Clear? And classically, how we are going to make the diagnosis? And classically, how we are going to make the diagnosis? The diagnosis is made on manometry in majority of motility disorders. So, guys, you saw the quality of our new rapid revision notes, which is given in Q&E format. We are sure that you're going to like it a lot. Continue your preparation. Keep working hard. Definitely, you're going to crack the exam with flying colors. All the best.